Okay. All right, welcome. Um, I've made a few of these POV lab videos, but this is the first live one. So today I'm starting growth curves in these shake flasks. I've got a bunch of videos on the specifics of that if you want to see those. Um, but basically I grew some mutant strains overnight in YPD or yeast peptone dextrose liquid culture. So this WT stands for wild type. And then these letters are different genes that I've knocked out with CRISPR. So uh, E is a gene, F is a gene. So this is the EF strain. It's got two genes knocked out. The EJ strain has the E and the J gene knocked out. Um, and these genes should increase growth uh, in acetate, which is basically neutralized vinegar. But again, these were grown in rich media. I took the overnight cultures and I spun them down just 500 microliters. You can see that it's a pellet now. So what I'm going to do is dump this out. Normally I would do this into um, a container, but I just have three of these samples and I want to be really meticulous with these. So I want to do it at my bench. It's just, you know, one and a half mils of liquid. All right, and so we're going to be inoculating these cells into this turkey media. So the first author of the paper, their last name was Turkey. And so we call this media turkey media. I'm going to be using copious amounts of ethanol to keep things sterile. I'm going to take a tip so it's set to 800 microliters. And I'm going to put two aliquots of 800 microliters into each tube. So then each tube should have about 1.6 milliliters of liquid. All right, so we'll take these and I wanna mix the cells around actually. I, I could do it with a vortexer. If I had more tubes, I would use the vortexer, but I'm too lazy to stand up. So I'm just gonna pipe that up and down, it's easy. It up. I'll try to show you the pellet in this last sample. See the little pellet right there? I'm just going to pipe that up and down to mix that around. Um, so I spun these cells down at 4000 G for two minutes. So a G is um, 9.8 meters per second squared. So 4000 G is 4000 times Earth. Earth's gravity in a centrifuge, which is enough to pellet the cells, but not enough to hurt the cells. Now we need to know exactly how many cells are in this tube. Um, and we're gonna use optical density to measure that. So I'm gonna set this pipette to 950 microliters, spray it down with ethanol again. And I'm gonna fill each of these cuvettes with 950 microliters. So this is a cuvette. I've got videos on this as well. Um, but the light shines through this way and there's a detector on the other side that measures how much light gets through the cuvette. So uh, the spectrophotometer is what it's called, um, measures the light that gets through the cuvette, but it has a pretty limited detection range. So if you have too many cells, it will just give you a, a high reading and it won't be accurate. So we actually have to dilute these cells down a lot in order to get within the detection range. Um, so we're doing a 20 times dilution in a total volume of one milliliter. So what that means is 50 microliters of culture and 950 microliters of the media. And when you do dilutions with um, for measuring optical density or OD, uh, you always want to use the media that your cells are in. So these cells are in turkey. So I'm going to use turkey media for the blank. That's what I did. Um, and I'm actually doing duplicates of each one because I really want these measurements to be perfect. 
Also, if anybody is in the chat right now, I'm not able to see it, so sorry. All right, got our next strain. I'm just pipetting up and down and mixing. Um, and by the way, even though you can see my wrists, I'm 100% wearing a lab coat. <laughs> it's definitely not a holiday. Uh, and I'm ignoring the safety rules. That's definitely not what's happening here. Okay. So those are all three of the strains. Nothing is sterile, so I can turn off the flame. Go over to the computer. Come on. There we go. Okay. So we have an extra one. I don't know if you noticed, but this is a blank here. This is the nano drop, so you can put a microliter drop of liquid to measure DNA there, or you can put a cuvette in here to measure optical density, and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to make sure there's no bubbles on the side of the cuvette, and we'll put it in. There's an arrow that shows where the light goes through. I like to push the cuvette into this corner so that it's just consistently in the same place every time. Um, and in software, you may or may not be able to see it. But we need to go to measure um, cell cultures, because that's what we're doing. I'm going to blank it. And then measure it. So we do need to make sure the use cuvette radio button is checked, or a checkbox. And uh, we get a measurement of 0 0.001 when we measure the blank, which is perfect. We want to be within, for our samples, we want to be within 0.1 and about 1.2 um, absorbance at 600 nanometers. So this first sample is 0.446. And then here's a um, technical replicate of that sample. So we should get about the same number, 0.446. This one is 0.444. It's pretty good. This next one. So that one was 0.356, sorry, 0.359. So we will need to multiply all these readings by 20 to get the proper measurement. And that last one, it was 0.359 and then 0.337, not too bad. But that's why we want to do these technical replicates because there is going to be a little bit of variability in all of these. And then finally, at the end, I like to measure the blank one more time. So that last one was 0.289 and 0.274. And then the blank measure is 0.003. So we call that good enough. I'm going to take all these readings and copy them, move them over to somebody's Excel file. And then We're going to multiply each of these readings by 20, because that's the dilution factor that we used. And then we want to um, inoculate each flask to an OD of 0 0.05. So C1V1 equals C2V2. Um, we're going to start with the C2V2. The final volume is going to be 25,000 microliters, or 25 milliliters, times the final concentration, which is 0 0.05. And then we're going to divide that by the OD of each of these samples. So I'm going to throw these away. These you can reuse, but they're like 10 cents each or something like that. So it's not a big deal. Sorry, sea turtles. So we need to write down these numbers to inoculate these flasks. Today is the fourth, I believe. It's the fourth, yeah. All right. 
nine, four, 23. And we do want to average these readings too, because we took two for each. So I'll average those. Oops. So we got wild type, we need 140 microliters for, what was it, EF? Yeah, EF. We need 170 or 180. And for EJ, we need 222. Okay. Good. That means we have enough of our culture. Spray that down. We have all of our shake flasks set up here. So there's flasks and then there's shake flasks. And there's arguments either way, but um, the shake flasks specifically have these ridges in the side here, and that helps aerate the liquid. So as the flask moves around and around like this, the um, culture will, will sort of ramp up off of these little indentations and increase the aeration. So, you need to be aware of that. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to culture organisms in shake flasks. There may be reasons why you don't want to use shake flasks. Um, but for our purposes here, I've been using shake flasks and I think I should keep that consistent. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so here is a big bottle of our turkey media, our auto pipetter, and then all of our fingers. So I'm going to try to be quiet here so I don't spit <laughs> bacteria and yeast into these flasks and contaminate them. Um, I'm just going to go through them. Here we go. going to try to focus up. this better. Thankfully, I have orangutan arms. So we're doing four flasks of each, which means we're doing them in quadruplicate. These growth curves are, I've said this in previous videos, it's something that's easy to do, but very difficult to do well and repeatedly. So that's why we're doing quadruplicate. We wanna make sure we're getting the correct data. And stop holding my breath for a second. Uh, and these 
plastic pipettes. You can get glass ones and clean them and autoclave them, but we just use disposable plastic ones. The 25 mil ones are like a dollar each with our university discount, and the 50 mil ones are like a dollar fifty or something. Um, so, again, not that expensive unless you're really running through them. Okay, so we need to inoculate each of these. So wild type, we need 140 microliters, so I'll set that. All right. And between each sample, I'm gonna spray ethanol. So, and I'm gonna shake each tube well so that it's well mixed. Pipe that up and down once. I need to do that closer to flame. Okay. That was a little messy. Let's try to be a little more calm this time. We need 180 microliters this one. Shake that up a little bit. Uh, man, I'm going to do it close to flame. Too much, too much espresso before this. Okay, last one, 222. I think with this um, and being consistent with microbial stuff, it doesn't really matter too much, you know, what your technique is. I think what matters more is the consistency of your technique. Um, but it is a little after three, which is it's five minutes after three, which is perfect. I wanted to start these at 3 p.m., but this will be fine. So this is our pizza oven style shaker incubator. pulls all the way out so we have easy access and these are sticky mats they're really dirty right now I don't know what happened there so these you just set down and when you need to take them out you just pull them right off if they get wet they get less sticky which is annoying but it's not a problem most of the time so this is very minimal media, and the cells need to adjust from the YPD condition, so the rich media condition, to this very restricted minimal media that's basically just salt water and vinegar, <laughs> salt water and neutralized vinegar. So this is a really stressful condition. Um, normally cells will start growing you know, within the first five hours or so. Uh, but in this minimal media, switching medias and everything, uh, we won't get any noticeable growth for like 40 hours. So not tomorrow morning, uh, or sorry, not tomorrow, but the next day at 9 a.m., I'll come in and take the first readings. Um, and hopefully the data looks good. So uh, that's it. I'm going to do... The usual cleanup. No, that's fine. It doesn't need to be charged. But that's it. That's how you start overnight cultures in shake flasks. Thanks for watching. Let's see if there's any any chats going on here. Can you do such videos for algae growth from scratch? Um, I don't work with algae, but uh, there's a neighboring lab 
that does work with algae. Algae, I've actually, I actually have grown algae before in sort of a home lab. Um, and I think it's a more sensitive organism. It takes longer to grow. Uh, you can grow it with or without light. So there's a lot of, and there's a, there's a lot of different species of algae. Um, so I think it's something that is similar to this. If you go back and watch um, some of my previous videos uh, on like sterile technique and things like that, the sterile technique with growing microorganisms is usually the hard part. Um, so I think if you can get that down, then you can figure out how to grow algae. Uh, again, it's a slower growing organism. So uh, there are gonna be competing, you know, molds and bacteria and whatever that can get into your culture. So your sterile technique should be even better than if you're just growing, you know, fast growing Easter bacteria. All right, cool. Thanks everyone for watching, that's it. Have a good Monday.